Last week, I built Ralph and Bella a gigantic cat castle, the size of my living room. I made it with these super cool cardboard bricks that slot together, essentially cardboard Lego. But unfortunately, the castle couldn't stay up forever. I kept the banners and put them up on the wall, and even built Ralph a smaller fort that can stay. But now I'm left with 760 cardboard bricks, and a once again spacious and open living room. Well, not for long. My sincere apologies to Danielle, who really wanted the living room back. I want to build a cat maze. In fact, three cat mazes in three difficulty levels. The first will be incredibly basic just to get the cats used to it, right up to the final boss maze which will be as large as a room will allow, with long corridors and several dead ends and false turns. And then we'd pit the cats against one another, in a brutal fight to the death, I mean finish line. Now I'm gonna say something which you might think is me just being mean, but you'll learn for yourself over the course of this video. Ralph and Bella aren't very bright. I mean I love them completely, but they're not exactly the smartest cats in the world. So as I got to work building the first maze, I wanted to keep it painfully simple, so hopefully they wouldn't be able to embarrass themselves too much. Once again, I just want to reiterate, I love my cats, and I really do apologise if this video just ends up being me roasting them for 10 minutes straight. One very blurry time lapse later, and the first maze was finished. So here it is, maze number one. Very simply, the cats enter at the back and follow it round the corner, then have a single decision, right to a dead end or left to the finish line. Simple, right? Oh, and let's go over the rules. Anything goes except leaving the maze. You'll notice that it's not very tall because I still want to be able to film over the top, but it means the cats can easily jump over the walls. If they jump over the internal walls, we'll just call it a creative strategy, but if they jump the external walls and leave the maze, they'll be disqualified from the round. And to clarify, the finish line counts as a bowl of treats at the end. Bella, these are for after you finish the maze. So with all that said, it was time for our first contestant. Ralph has been taking this whole thing very seriously. He's even been studying for the last few days, tweaking his strategy and making sure he's as ready as can be. But will it be enough to beat Bella? And he's off to an incredibly promising start, ignoring the dead end and heading straight towards the finish line with certainty. But what's this? I don't believe my eyes. He's bottled it. The pressure's all got too much for his fluffy little head and he sat down, just centimetres from the finish line. In all my seconds commentating cat mazes, I've never seen anything quite like this. This really is one for the history books. And he waited, and he waited, and he waited, before finally making a sprint finish and enjoying his feast in a time of 45 seconds. Well, that was certainly something. Let's see if Bella can do better. Rather than studying, Bella's been taking a different approach to preparation, instead trying to make sure she's as rested as possible for the big day, and sleeping even more than usual. And who knows, Ralph started out strong but got tired, so maybe all that extra sleep will give Bella the advantage. Our second contestant has just entered the arena, and after a brief head shake makes her way to the first and only junction. And she can't seem to make up her mind. One way leads to eternal doom, and the other eternal victory. And it's clearly a thought that's weighing heavily on Bella, who's still struggling to decide. Bella's technique was clearly a very thought out one, and she eventually made her way to the exit to enjoy her treats. So let's take a look at the scoreboard. Bella emerges victorious in a stunning time of 35 seconds. I guess slow and steady really does win the race. But with two rounds to go, it's still all to play for. So Maze 2 is all finished. Maze 2 now sees two dead ends, this first short one, and this other deceptively long corridor with a dead end around the corner. The correct path is still fairly simple, straight down the middle, but will the two false paths be enough to catch either cat out? Contestant 1 enters fast and immediately makes a break for victory. Heavens above, he's only gone and made it! There's no hesitation at all, just a beeline for glory. That really is a magnificent performance and a breathtaking time of merely four seconds. Four seconds? And he was so in the zone that he didn't even notice the treats. Surely Bella doesn't stand a chance. Contestant 2 enters and the arena door is closed behind her. Her first few steps look hopeful, but again she seems to be pausing and thinking. And this time, just five seconds in, her thoughtful approach has already cost her the round. Okay, I'm gonna speed things up a bit. Over a minute later, Bella's made up her mind but heads down the wrong path. Once again, she takes her time, looking around and sniffing the cardboard. Maybe she's accepted defeat and so is simply enjoying the craftsmanship of this beautifully constructed stadium. Eventually she turns around and takes the other wrong path, before stopping by the entrance and proceeding to take the first wrong path again. 
Oh, Bella. At this point, our interference didn't really matter, so I laid down a trail of treats to try and lead her to the finish line. With her time in tatters, can Bella follow the delicious snacks to the finish line? Evidently not. Hell's bell, she jumps! Contestant 2 has left the maze and is thereby disqualified. I repeat, Bella has been disqualified. You can't put her back in, she's been disqualified. This really is unprecedented. Bella's coach has re-entered her into the maze, defying all maze association rules. This really will cost them dearly at the judges' table. And even with the additional help, after a shocking time of 13 minutes, Bella failed to finish. This has been a most remarkable comeback for contestant 1, finishing in a time of 4 seconds, almost 200 times faster than contestant 2. Wow, what a round! I will surely be telling my grandchildren about this day! Everything comes down to Maze 3, and this time it's a lot more difficult. It'll probably be Christmas before Bella finishes. Oh, wait. This time the entrance is on the right, and after rounding a corner, there are four possible directions. Left to a dead end, right to a dead end, straight on to a dead end, or straight and right to victory. This single path then snakes round all the way to the finish line with no further obstacles. But will the cats be confident enough to follow it around several twists and turns? This time we're going to let Bella go first. And remember, it's currently a draw. This round is a decider. And this time the stakes are higher too. At the finish line, Bella has some pure chicken breast and Ralph a whole tuna loin. I mean, they get their rewards either way. But let's just pretend the stakes are higher. Contestant 2 has entered the maze for the final time. And after last round's disqualification, she'll be looking to make up some ground. She pauses and sits down. Did she not learn anything from the previous round? It really makes you wonder just what on earth her coach said to her in the changing room team talk. After a solid 60 seconds, Bella goes right, but right's wrong. And just when I thought this whole debacle couldn't get any more controversial, Bella's coach appears to be guiding the way with her favourite toy. And she's encouraging her to bypass the long corridor and instead jump the internal walls. This contestant certainly has a history jumping walls, but will the jump this time be a legal one? Good lord! She's destroying the stadium! I don't know what to say! They don't prepare you for this in Commentator Academy! But what's this? A devilishly handsome chap in a blue shirt is leaning in and repairing the damage! My, what a good looking fellow! It was clear that Bella didn't stand a chance on her own, so Danielle kept trying to get her to jump the internal wall with the toy. You now rejoin me eight minutes into the final round, and Bella's somewhat awkward landing has landed her on the correct path. All she must do now is follow it round the corner to finally put us out of our misery. And she's going for it, chasing after the feathery toy with remarkable speed for such a chonker. She hesitates at the final corner. Can she see this through to the finish? Yes, she most definitely can. Bella has completed the maze in a time of eight and a half minutes precisely. And in all the excitement, I'd actually forgotten to put any treats in her bowl. By the time I filled it back up, she was back exploring the maze, probably wondering where her reward was. Now it was Ralph's turn, and eight and a half minutes was the time to beat. Contestant one is off and appears to have an advantage. He can quite literally smell the finish line. That tuna is some very potent stuff, and this fluffy boy is using his nose to guide the way, but it leads him straight into the first dead end. The feast is just the other side of the wall, and he can smell it so close and yet so very far. Now this was actually really interesting to watch. I know I've spent much of this video laughing at how silly my cats can be, but we were watching Ralph problem solve now, and logically tried to figure out how to get to that incredibly smelly tuna. He ventures further into the maze, still using that snout of his as a compass, but the needle is pointing decisively back to where he just was. It makes you question, will this in fact be an advantage or indeed his downfall? With just over a minute now elapsed on the clock, there is still everything to play for. But then, as if by some magical power granted by sheer will and determination, he turns, ignoring the dead ends and heading straight for glory. Ralph marches forward with such decisiveness that you have to wonder if his coach has slipped him a map. He pauses every few seconds to sniff the air, but this is looking exceptionally promising. He rounds the penultimate corner, making sure to smell everything, including the maze side camera, and turns onto the home straight. He can physically see the tuna now, and he's done it! Ralph has reached the finish line in an impressive 1 minute 48 seconds, far ahead of Bella's time and securing himself the round, the championship and eternal glory. This really has been one for the ages. There will be books written about this monumental day. So Ralph won. Here he is with his tiny little trophy. Admittedly, he had the enormous advantage of being able to smell the finish line. But believe it or not, Bella's actually allergic to fish, so we couldn't give her tuna too. Anyway, I'll see you all next year. Merry Christmas.